So one thing that I get asked a lot uh, from artists and designers that want to start their own business or want to work for themselves is how do you do it? Like, how do you bridge that gap between a full-time job and a career um, self-employed? And some people are really cut out for it and it would do well. Some people aren't at all. Um, and so I thought I'd take a little bit of time to unpack how I did it myself and a few things you might want to think about and a few of the earlier projects that I worked on to show you what I did. I worked it for seven years for the National Wild Turkey Federation, mainly after college. And I spent a lot of time there learning the, the production process of a magazine, how work works, like the, the office environment, how to collaborate, um, how to create a product, um, how to hit deadlines. And that was a really good kind of incubator for me. Eventually, I felt like I needed a new challenge. You know, I've, I've always been one to push myself and, and I felt like I needed a new challenge and take the next step. And at the same time, I was feeling that way. A lot of people that I had worked for, editors or marketing people at the Turkey Federation, had left and gone and worked other jobs and were starting to kick freelance work back to me and ask me to help them out on some of their projects with their new employers and their new clients. So... That naturally was kind of a fit. I was painting and designing and illustrating nights and weekends. And eventually it got to the point where I didn't have any debt except for my house. Um, I had some savings and I felt like I could make that jump. Um, my first client, my first big client out on my own was the Archery Trade Association. And they, they promote archery not only in bow hunting, but also recreational archery all over the world, really. And so they brought me in, and I worked with them to create some curriculum guides on how to start an archery range, um, how to learn how to bow hunt or bow fish. And looking back, those were some of my favorite projects. They were, they were fun. Um, I feel like I have always operated in a niche where hunting and art combine. And a lot of other artists and designers and illustrators, they don't really understand the outdoors or bow equipment or gear or hunting. And that was my passion. So I felt like I got lucky there where my biggest passions align with my biggest skill set. And it was a, a, it was a need that people had was some of the illustrations for those. So, uh, our first illustrations were like, we'd take a black bear. Okay. And I would show the external black bear with all his hide and fur, uh, background and foreground. And then the next illustration would be his skeleton and internal organs, and then just the organs and then just the vitals. And we would lay those to where they could flip up in a book and kids could look at where to shoot a bear. Uh, we did the same thing with like feral hogs and rabbits and deer and turkey and all that kind of stuff. And those were really fun projects to me, to me because they're valuable to the client, but they were fun for me to do at, as well. Um, we also did a bunch of uh, gear illustrations, the parts of a compound bow, um, how to build a blind, how to approach a deer from downwind. Um, and from there, I built up kind of a reputation for being able to deliver um, quality, clear illustrations and help them communicate an idea in the outdoor industry. I would hit deadlines. I'd do good work for one client and that would lead to another and then more work with them and then lead to another. And there were some lean years, but for the most part, um, I just kept building and building and hitting deadlines and, and keeping some of those same clients. And really, I've been on my own for about 11 years now and it's just now in the past year that I've walked away from a lot of that client work to produce our own stuff. I've got a few things that people need to keep in mind, especially artists. You know, artists are known to be kind of space cadets living in the clouds all over the map. And as an artist, if you want to work for yourself, you've got to be able to hit deadlines. Um, you've got to be able to deliver. So the first thing I would say is you've got to be good. You've got to hone your skills and your craft to a certain point to where you can deliver a quality product for that client. Um, that even means like you've got to prepare your files right for printers and the web and know the technical aspects um, of your craft in order to do that well. You are one of many. So if you're a designer, like for example, I was working to take products to market. So the client would ship me the product. I'd have to art direct the photo shoots, hire a photographer, do the post-production, maybe some logo work and package work. Uh, write a lot of the copy and help them develop the overall package to present to the consumer. 
And that's a really big, important job because I was helping them form the first impression that a lot of consumers had of their product. However, I'm just one of many on that. And I'm the one I've got to wait on, you know, product engineers, developers, um, manufacturing, retail, all of these things come into play. And I'm just one piece of that puzzle. So you've got to recognize where you fit in that role. And you've got to be able to hit deadlines and manage yourself within that because you don't want to be the weak link for that whole process for that client. Otherwise, you're not going to get hired again. The other one is to use your creativity to serve clients, not vice versa. Um, that client is not paying you to just explore your creativity and kind of fumble around all these random ideas. They're hiring you to get a job done. And you've got to realize that that your creativity, your skill set is to serve that client's needs. And it's the client's needs at the end of the day that are going to help you get paid and help you get more work and be successful in that career. And, you know, if designers can't handle that, you've got to understand that, like, that client's going to revise your work. They're going to change things last minute. And if you're a designer that can't handle that, you might not want to do client work and be the direct communication with that client. So those are just some things to think of. Again, everybody does it their own way. Everybody has their own unique path. I've known people that have paint, that have, have done design work for years and then just cold turkey quit and painted for the rest of their career. Um, for me, it's been kind of a blend. I like working in the outdoor industry. I've liked the product and marketing and advertising, advertising side of it. And so it's been a little bit of a blend. But if you want to hear some more, we talk about some more stories in the Art of Hunting podcast, um, the episode we just recorded this morning. So you can find that on Spotify and uh, Apple iTunes. And uh, just keep following along. We're going to keep doing a lot more behind the scenes content here. We're going to talk about a lot of these things and uh, follow the Art of Hunting podcast. There's some good stuff there. And uh, we appreciate you being here. And I hope some of what I've learned can help you out.